So I'm about to put you guys on to some free game. I have on my glasses. So you know, we mean business. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl B Denise. And if you're new, welcome. Feel free to join us in my little corner of the internet by subscribing down below and hitting that notification bell so that you're notified whenever I upload. So today's video will be my most requested video. Um, so you guys have been asking me about doing this video. I've been seeing on Twitter a lot of people talking about investing and stuff. So I was like, I used to be an investment specialist at Merrill Edge, a subsidiary of Merrill Lynch. Basically the investment side of Bank of America. Everybody knows Bank of America, right? Yeah, so I used to work for them. I worked for them from 2017 to 2019 when I lived in Maryland. Um, and I was licensed. I did get my Series 66 and Series 7 licenses. And you were able to broker check me. I mean, my licenses expired last year because I no longer work for a broker so they expired um, but I still have all the knowledge because I studied for those exams and I was able to pass them so I decided that I would expand my channel to also not only makeup fashion beauty lifestyle content but finance content as well because um, I did have that experience and I am a finance graduate like I graduated with a bachelor's degree in finance so I decided why not just add it on to my channel because a lot of people seem interested in investments and I was like I can share my knowledge people want to know and I have the knowledge so why not share it so I'm about to put you guys on to some free game I have on my glasses so you know we mean business so if you're interested in learning more about investing in the stock market and finding out how I flipped $100 into $350 and just how to get started in investment and all of that stuff, then keep on watching. So I have my notebook where I wrote down notes. So if you looking, you see me looking down, I'm looking at the notes that I wrote. I just wrote out a few notes that I had so that I have all my thoughts together. So here we will begin. Um, so the first question I'm going to answer is the most, well, the most basic question there is, and that's what is investing? So here I have written down, when you invest, you are becoming the owner of a company. When you buy a share of stock, you are owning a small portion of that company. The first tip that people should know is that investing is not guaranteed. You won't always guaranteed get a gain. You can lose in investing. You can lose your money. So I always say, make this money that you don't have anything to do with like money you would have put in your savings account and just put aside for a rainy day you can test it out in the stock market um i know a lot of people are afraid of losing i was one of those people even though i worked in the business for two years i was so afraid fun fact i didn't invest any of my money until after i stopped working at merrill literally i invested for the first time last year during the big stock market crash in the beginning of the pa um, pandemic i was like okay there's no way i could if i buy and hold i would lose my money because right now the stocks are at an all-time low and you would see on the news every day if you watch financial news and um, even not on financial news normal news it would come up how the stock market is so horrible um the worst since the depression and stuff like that so i was like i was putting this money in my savings anyway why not just throw it into the stock market and see what happens so anyway you're not guaranteed a gain you can lose when investing in the stock market unless you put your money in like a cd or something like that in, in cds um they rarely lose you will always just gain the interest that you were promised when you put your money into it but in stocks there is a high chance or not high chance but there's a 50 50 chance depending on how the stock market goes that you can lose because how the stock market works it's based off of the economy and the economy is controlled by people so different stocks perform as well as people want them to so for example what can i use for example okay for example amazon so amazon in the beginning was probably like at 15 dollars per share but then when people saw how good it was doing like everybody was using amazon and it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger 
Um, people started buying up more of the stock and the more of a stock you buy, the more the value of the stock goes up. So let's say 500,000 people bought stock of Amazon when it was at $15. Of course, the price would then go up because now the stock is worth much more because there's more money backing the, the company that that stock is for. So it, it's basically depending on humans. And that's the tricky thing about the stock market because humans are finicky, for lack of a better word. Um, so like, while I was working at Merrill, I do have one example that shows how iffy the stock market can be. So there was this cannabis company called Tilray, right? Tilray um, one day was trading at about $5 per share. And then there was news coming out that Tilray was partnering with, I think, Coca-Cola. Was supposed to be partnering with Coca-Cola to then make this cannabis-infused soft drink. So Tilray climbed up, up, up. By like midday of that day, Tilray was brought about $50 per share from $5 per share in just one day because people were buying the stock because of this news coming out of them partnering with Coca-Cola. Then at the end of the day, um, I think Coca-Cola scrapped the whole idea. So then people started selling off their shares of Tilray and then by the end of that, by the next day opening of the next day, Tilray opened at about $2 per share. That's an example of how the stock market is not guaranteed. Um, if you had Tilray and then you were one of those that sold it when it was, when you bought it, if you bought it at like $5 and then you sold it while it was at 50, good for you. But if you held on to Tilray thinking it was going to keep doing good, keep doing good, then you probably lost about $3 per share, depending on what, if you bought it at $5, you probably lost like $3 per share. But if you bought it when it was like probably $40 and climbing, you probably lost that amount, like the 38 or whatever dollars in between, and that's per share. So if you have bought, let's say 10 shares at $42, you'd have spent $420, and then you'd have lost $380 like that. So that's an example of how the stock market is not something that's guaranteed. But if done right, you can make a lot of money. Um, so how the rich stay rich, they don't put their money in a savings account and just leave it earning that 0.23% or whatever. They get rich by investing into stocks, bonds, mutual funds. That's how they get rich. They invest their money to make more money. They also invest in real estate and stuff like that. But for the sake of this video, we're talking about stocks. So do yourself a favor, take, um, it can be a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars. You can even start like I did. I just started out with 50 bucks and then I graduated, I went up to 70 and then now I'm at a hundred and then like every time I get paid, I put a little bit into my investments. So that's how the rich get richer. They invest their money so that their money is making money for them. So. Don't just throw some money in a savings account thinking, oh, I'm just gonna make the um, residuals, the little percentage that the savings account make. You should definitely look into a uh, investment account. Anyway, got off track there. So I have here, there are multiple products to invest in. Like I said before, you can invest in stock that's owning part of a company. You can invest in bonds. So that's buying partial debt of a company. So it's like you basically buying an IOU from the company. So they'll owe you when they get better, when they get in a better financial situation. That's what buying a bond is. And there are ETFs, which are exchange traded funds. Um, this is a basket of stocks or bonds. So it's like a collection of stocks and bonds. And mutual funds. This is also a collection of stocks or bonds. Um, the most popular thing that I, that people invest in are stocks. So that's what we'll be focusing on stocks. And that's what I get a lot of questions on stocks. So yeah, the reasons why people invest, people invest for retirement and people invest like to save up to buy something. Like if you want to buy a house, if you want to buy a new car, or if you want to save money, basically create generational wealth. You can do that by having or investing into the stock market. Okay, so now we're going to go on to my personal use or my personal experience with investing. So the platform that I use to invest is called Robinhood. I'll leave the link 
to the Robinhood app in the description box below. I do know that Robinhood is for US citizens, so or if you have a US social security number. So I'll do more research to find companies that take non-US citizens, because I do know um, a lot of people from the Virgin Islands will be watching this and are interested in stocks. So I will do that research and leave the link to whatever company that I find in the description box. But I use Robinhood. The reason why I use Robinhood is that I feel like Robinhood is one of the more beginner friendly apps that are out there. I mean, I did have experience, but as I said, um, my I, did, I haven't been practicing it for a while and my licenses did expire a while probably like last year, um, early last year, like April. So I felt more comfortable and I wanted my mom to invest as well. So I felt more comfortable using the Robinhood app and more comfortable having her use the Robinhood app. Um, I love Robinhood because it breaks down investing into layman's terms. So they use everyday terms on the app. Um, you'll understand it. I'm pretty sure your grandparents could understand it like it's that simple on that app and Every day they email you this thing called Robin Hood snacks where they will break down different financial news of the day so they'll let you know like how different stocks doing or news that would affect different stocks that would be in your account and I did see that PayPal and cash app both have investing options so you can look into those as well to if Robinhood isn't the app for you. If you feel like Robinhood wouldn't be the one for you, um, PayPal and Cash App also have the investing option. So like I said before, Robinhood is the app that I use. So let me just read the our story like about us part off of the Robinhood app. It says, Robinhood's story begins almost a decade ago at Stanford, where Baiju and Vlad met as college roommates and classmates. After graduation, they packed their bags for New York and built two finance companies, selling trading software to hedge funds. With their newfound experience in the world of finance, they realized that big Wall Street firms pay effectively nothing to trade stocks, while most Americans are charged commissions for every trade. They soon decided it was more important to build products that would provide everyone with access to the financial markets, not just the wealthy. Two years after heading to New York, they moved back to California and built Robinhood, a company that leverages technology to encourage everyone to participate in our financial system. So that's another thing that I like about Robinhood. They don't charge commission. You just buy you just buy the stock at whatever price it's trading for. I did I do know that at my old job where I used to work, they did charge commission um, per trade to clients. So you would have to pay how much the stock was worth and then um, like a $6.95 per trade commission. So yeah, that's what also what I like about Robinhood and a lot of people that I work with um, back then too also have, well, they had Robinhood accounts before they worked there, but you know, with all the conflict of interest stuff, you'll have to move all, when working for a broker, you have to uh, utilize that broker. So they had to move all their stuff to the company that we worked at. So yeah, but yeah, Robinhood, as I said, no commission. That's why I feel it's beginner friendly, um, no commission. It breaks down stuff into layman terms. You can do a lot of research on the app itself. And they basically tell you all you need to know. They have their analyst section where they'll tell you um, which apps analysts recommend buying, selling, holding, and stuff like that. So I'll put here, I'll insert here, the value of my portfolio right now. Let me check it. I'll screenshot it right now so that it'll be at that point. So my portfolio is currently worth $378.80. It's currently up 1.86% for the day. The market already closed. Okay, so let me also break down the stock market. The stock market, the stock market opens up at 9.30 a.m. Eastern every day and closes as up at about 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, before then, it's called the pre-market and after four, it's called the 
after market hours. You can trade within the pre-market hours and you can trade in the aftermarket hours, but it's not the activity isn't the activity on the stock isn't as frequent as it would be in the open market. So you can buy a stock in the after the before market but it can open up as something completely different um by the time you place the trade it could be something way different so it's not really recommended to trade in the pre and after markets but it can be done so let's see here um my thing is i can tell you how you can go about trading but i can't tell you what stocks you should invest in so if you're watching this video for me to say, okay, invest in Disney, invest in Apple, invest in Amazon, th that, this is not the video for that. I can give you tips and tricks to help you decide what stocks you think would be best for you to invest in, but I can't tell you what stocks to invest in because then if they don't do well, you'll be like, well, Brianna told me to invest in this and now look at this. No. So um, I'll go ahead and go through the industries that I think would be performing better in the future. So how I invest. Okay, I'll tell you guys how I invest and what I look for in a company before I choose to invest in it. So what I do is that I look at different, you'd like want to, sorry, I have to Robin, log into Robinhood. So you'll want to diversify your portfolio. That means having different stocks in different industries so it there is healthcare there's technology there's pharmaceuticals there's consumer goods food and drink there's finance there are hospitality healthcare manufacturing real estate entertainment there are many different industries for you to invest in so you want to diversify your portfolio and have different aspects in that make up your portfolio so your portfolio is basically all the stocks bonds or whatever that you own so the first thing you'd want to do is decide how much money you would be able to, how much money you can afford to lose. That's the one tip that I would say. Decide how much money you can afford to lose. So if you make, let's say, $2,000 per month and you feel that you can afford to lose $50, then use that money and invest it. Um, you can hook it up directly, the Robinhood app directly to your bank account and just transfer over the $50. And the money becomes available for you to use in trading right away, even though it doesn't come off of your bank account. That's another thing that I like about Robinhood. With other services, you'll have to wait until the money is actually on the account before you can trade with it. But with the Robinhood app, it becomes available right away. And then this $50 will then be called your buying power. Your buying power is the money that you have on your account to spend. So if you want to buy, let's say, what goes for like $20? So GE is now going for General Electric. The stock is now going for $11.31. And you have buying power of $50. So you can buy about four shares of GE, which would be about 40 something dollars and that would be enough for your buying power of $50. You can only spend up to the amount of money that your buying power is, which would be, for this example, $50. So like I was saying, um, this is how I go about determining what stocks I would want to buy. I would open up a stock. So let's open up here Norwegian Cruise Lines, right? Norwegian Cruise Lines. That's one of the stocks that I own. So I own shares of Norwegian Cruise Line. What I did to determine whether I should buy Norwegian Cruise Line is that I looked at how much Norwegian Cruise Line was worth on the day that I bought it. So the day I bought Norwegian Cruise Lines at, it was $10.82 per share. That's when I bought Norwegian Cruise Lines. I then looked at what price Norwegian Cruise Line was at before the pandemic. So the, I bought this right in the middle of the pandemic when they were like shutting down all the cruise lines, airlines, everything. So when I bought Norwegian Cruise Line, it was at $10.82 per share. 
I looked at how much it was before the pandemic and before the pandemic Norwegian Cruise Line was worth $59.10 per share. So then I was like, okay, it was worth $59 pre-COVID. It's worth $10 now. I can buy shares of Norwegian because post-COVID, it would most likely, people would start going back on cruises again and I'm buying to hold. So I don't plan on taking this money out of the stock market right now. So I'm just like, if I buy shares now, it started before COVID, it was at about $60 per share. It's at 10 now. Post COVID, it could return to its former glory of $60 per share. This is something that I should buy. So I bought shares of Norwegian Cruise Lines. It was at $10 when I bought it. It's currently in the post market at $24.37. So I already have a gain of about $13 per share on Norwegian Cruise Lines. So that's how I determined what stocks I'm going to buy. So I did the same thing for, let's see, American Airlines. So I purchased shares of American Airlines. When I bought American Airlines, it was at about $11.78. I looked back to what American Airlines was at. Pre-COVID and pre-COVID American Airlines was about $26.57 per share, give or take a little more, a little less. So I looked at that and based off of that, I determined post-COVID American Airlines could return to its former glory and I could gain about $10, $20 on that stock. So that's how I determined what to buy and that's for a travel industries so i decided that travel industries would be a good one because they would return to their former or, or their pre-covid price once everything goes back to normal or once we establish whatever our new normal is um, people travel people always travel travel business travel for pleasure people are always on the go so i do know that i did know that travel industries would go back to where they were another good buy that i had i'm not telling you guys to go buy these now because it may be too late to get them but these are just stocks that i own um another good purchase that i made i actually had me i bought it and my cousin bought it and we're reaping the benefits girl <laughs> um was snapchat we bought snapchat in the beginning of the pandemic as well and when we bought it, it was at about, I bought it, it was at $11.14. My thing is, I was a chicken, so I had my mom investing before I did. And when she bought it, it was at like $8 and something cents. So I bought a few shares of Snapchat at $11.14. Snapchat is currently trading at $52.52. .52. So you see here. That's how much Snapchat is at currently. So we have a gain per share of about 40 bucks per share. So Snapchat was a good buy at that point. So as I said, and that's a technology. As I said, you should diversify your portfolio. So in here I have some, I have some entertainment. I have some pharmaceuticals. I have it, travel industries, like I said before, I have industrials i have just have a diverse portfolio um another cool thing that i love about Robinhood is that they also give you free shares so when you sign up they'll give you one free share of a company my free share was plug symbol p l u g which was for the plug power company when they gave me this stock um, when I signed up during the beginning of the pandemic, um, this stock was worth about $6, right? $6. I didn't have to pay for it. So I was like, okay, cool. They give me a little $6 stock. No biggie. A free $6, right? Today, Plug Power is valued at $53.20. So I got a free 
$50 from Robinhood. Like if I cash out my portfolio, if I sell this stock now, I would get $53. I didn't have to use any of my money to get that $53. That's a free $53 from Robinhood. So that's another reason why I really like the Robinhood app. So yeah, um, once you have all your stocks that you want, um, if a stock reaches a price where you feel like you want to cash out now, you then go about and you sell that stock back into the stock market. But for me, I'm not looking to sell anything right now. Like I tell you guys, I'm buying and holding for post-COVID prices to see how that goes. I may even hold beyond that and I, I'll just keep adding to my portfolio. Um, it could be a gift to one of my kids one day. I can just give my kid... Um, or all of my kids just divide up the portfolio and give it to them as a gift. As I said, um, we're building wealth, we're building generation wealth, and this is one of the best ways to do it. Because as you guys can see how much Amazon is worth today, thousands of dollars, but it didn't start out that way. So the best thing I feel that you should do, um, I'm all over the place, but the one of the best things I think that you should do when investing in a stock or trying to decide which stock to invest in, is invest in a stock that you use a lot. I invested in Snapchat because I use it every day. I invested in Twitter because I use it every day. So invest in something that you use, something that you believe in. People invested in Amazon because they believed in it. People invested in Apple because they believed in it and they're now reaping the benefits of they having faith into that company. So you can do the same. Um, if you have any questions about anything, all my DMs are open. I'm always open to answer any questions. Um, you can DM me questions and I'll do like a investing question and answer video. But this is just um, a little introductory video telling you guys what I know, what I use, how you can get started. And as I said, the Robinhood link will be in the description box below. Please let me know any questions you may have. Also, you can utilize the comment section down below and ask me any questions you may have. I am an open book. I'm always willing to teach people what I know. I actually love teaching people what I know, like teaching my mom how to invest. Her portfolio as well is doing pretty good. I see you, Dibs. I see you. My cousin's portfolio is doing pretty good as well. As you can see, everything is kind of on an up climb now from where it was before, but you can still always throw your money in there because it's only it's only better to come like especially like in the travel industries better is to come everything is going to go back to where it was pre-covid i'm not saying this is this is not an overnight get rich quick scheme um as you guys know well as i said before i invested this money when covid just started so that was like march but I didn't do anything with the money. I did no work. I just put the money in there. And now January, 2021, my $100 turned into $350. So it's like, and that I didn't even invest a lot because I'm, I'm a chicken. I didn't really invest a lot of my money. So if I could do it, you guys can do it too. Another aspect that you can look into is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is more of a newer investing so I don't have much knowledge on Bitcoin, but I am doing research. I've been reading the books. I've been reading the articles about Bitcoin. So I will be putting some of my money into Bitcoin. Even if it's like, I cannot afford a full Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is now at about 30 something thousand like that per share. So it doesn't, you don't have to own a full share of Bitcoin or anything really. Bitcoin is at $38,455.06 per share. I don't got that kind of money. And if I did, I'd be buying a house, not Bitcoin. But I would invest into a percentage of Bitcoin. So like every time I get a few dollars outside of my regular investing, I'll throw a few dollars into Bitcoin and see what happens. Um, that's basically how the stock market is. You throw something in and hope it sticks. And if it don't stick, then you can sell it back right away, get your money back. As people always say, you have to risk big to win big. Scared money don't make no money. Literally, that's literally that's how life works. If you're too scared to risk something, then you can't reap the rewards 
of that thing when it does come to fruition and be positive throw your money in there say this will make it because i believe in the stock and it will so if you like i said if you guys have any questions let me know you can message me on instagram snapchat facebook you can even leave your question in this comment section i'm always willing and free to answer any questions anybody have and yeah that's my video stay tuned for more videos as you guys can see this was more like a ramble <laughs> a more rambly introductory video i'll do more focused videos in the coming days so make sure to subscribe for that content and i'm wishing you guys lots of love and light always and also my brother has me on a time constraint he told me i better be done by seven and it's about six 46 because he has this tournament he wants to attend on his game and he's gonna be loud so i'm wrapping this up now i hope you guys enjoy the video let me know any questions you have like i said before open book license well i was licensed i have the criteria um i'm my track record shows i flipped the hundred dollars into 350 let me know any questions you have thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one bye